Hello everybody and welcome back to Farming Simulator 22. It is now July. I did skip through June since nothing had really changed and we now have a crop which is ready. Yes, the canola crop is ready to harvest. So that's what we're going to be doing today. But also the sorghum crop would definitely benefit from having another application of fertilizer. So hopefully we can make some money with the canola and get that done. Also, look at this. We have plenty more wool. There's the texture of the wool. Sort of stitched together. The, uh, the bag that it's in, uh, or the sack, and um, yeah, everything seems to be fine here. So, again, whenever we have the money, it would be very nice to buy some more sheep. We have space for five more. So, first things first, let's jump into the combine harvester. I really don't know how much money we're going to make. Uh, as mentioned in the previous episode, the canola crop I think has only been fertilized once, so it won't be super amazing. The sorghum crop is going to be fertilised twice though, so that'll be much better. Oh, yes, before we go any further, you can see that the grapevines are looking very healthy after I prune them. But I do need to do some more work. We need to mulch through here, cultivate, and spray. So, yes, it could be much more uh, productive. We're just trying to save up for the equipment to do that. And as soon as we do have the money, we can expand. Okay, so there has been an update, I've just updated the game, and um, whenever you update it does put the default dead zones back on for the steering wheel. So I think we're going to have to leave, and then rejoin, once I have re-enabled the 0%. Uh, but that looks to be going through nicely. We're feeding the canola into the combine. Uh, it seems to be... Filling the combine is an okay rate. Obviously it doesn't yield like wheat or barley or oats does do. Uh, th those crops, you get a loss out of a field. But the canola is worth more. Actually, out of interest, canola, how much is it currently worth? We have, wow, £1,987. And I don't think that is a train station. No, it is not. It's the grain elevator. There we go. That's much better. No dead zone. Yeah, defaults to 14%. Always has done. I always like it on zero. So we're going to head around the headland first of all. Clearly no swath dropping with canola. We just chop it. Straw is not available for your current crop type. And this is actually my biggest field. Which is good. I don't know how many combine loads. I think if we say a tank and a half, that would be that would be very good. Uh, but yeah, very hard to judge, very hard to predict. I do need to get the tractor and trailer ready. Oh, and of course, this is the grass which I mowed just a couple of episodes back. But because we have got one day per month, I might have been saying one day per season in another episode, one day per month. Uh, yeah, two months have passed since we did that, so actually that was a long time ago. Which means if we did own our own mower, we could really benefit because we could just mow it again. Right, okay, so I'm just going to get back to the top, we'll then get the tractor and trailer prepared, and then I'll probably time up to doing the rest of the field. It shouldn't take too long. And then we can see how much money we've made. Can't wait to find out. Okay, so here we are. We're at the top. We're not full, but I just want to get everything ready. There's my trailer. Nice and empty. And we'll back up to it, get it attached, and we'll just leave it at the side where I've already harvested. Don't want to put it in the way. There we go, that should be fine. So predictions, I'm going to go with a total of 20,000 litres. I'm not sure what the capacity of the trailer is, 
but I'm just going to say 20,000 leads in total. We'll find out. So I'm going to crack on, and I'll see you when the field is done. Okay, here is something to note. You can see we're going through a much smaller, much narrower piece of the crop because it's the final part here. And there's much less chaff coming out the back of the combine. So that is dynamic, that is responding to how much is actually being fed into the machine. Because if I now go over to the other side where it's much denser, where we're going to be taking in a full header's width, you should see much more chaff coming out the back, much more being chopped. Okay, and now we're over on this side, and you can see how much is actually being chopped and being thrown out the back. There is absolutely loads. So that's dynamic. That changes depending on how much you are feeding. And, um, yeah, it's one of those features which you don't immediately even notice. I just noticed it because I was feeding in that small amount. And, uh, yeah, you could tell it was different. Okay, so, yeah, the trailer is full. That needs to go over to the cell point. We have 71% in the combine, I'm still going. Uh, it's going to be full again, so it's going to be at least two full combine loads, which is brilliant. And then, yeah, we'll have to come back into the combine, probably three, I think it's going to be three trailer loads. So this is, uh, this is, this is very good news. I will just check, I'm pretty sure this has only been fertilised once, so I could have done even better had I had uh, a fertiliser spreader. Yep. One application. This is why it's crucial for me to put two applications on the sorghum as well, because we can make even more. It's already pretty good. We can make it even better. Okay, so when we are almost full, I will resume the video, and then we'll head off with the tractor. See how much money we can make from load number one. 92%. Now, as I've said before, we are running currently just the one day per month. The reason for that is just because I don't have enough stuff at the moment on the farm to do. But eventually, when we're big enough, uh, one day we'll be nowhere near enough. So we'll be increasing it to two or three, or maybe even more. So that will, of course, mean that every year that we have is going to be longer. Can we get to the end? We can. 99%. Well, not really even worth putting the header down again, but I will do. Hmm, got further than I thought. <laughs> there we go. Turn the engine off, into the tractor, and actually, yeah, let me just make sure I've marked. I think I did mark it. Oh, I didn't. The grain elevator. I'm just going to tag that, and I'm just going to double check the price. Need to make sure we're doing uh, the best we can. Yep. Okay, brilliant. You can see the beacon of light over there. I'll just head in that general direction, and then we'll find it. Anyway, it's 8,000 litres for each trailer load. I did say uh, but 20,000 litres would be my guess for the total off the field. I don't know if I'm going to be correct. I'm very rarely correct. So let's see if this time I can be correct. But yeah, we've got no beacon on this tractor. Oh, well. At some point, we'll be getting a new tractor anyway. trundle over here. Oh yeah, I've seen a few comments about the amount of mirrors I have enabled. Yes, you can you can keep all these mirrors on at the same time. 
I need to change my setting. I think I've got it set to two. That's why the middle one keeps flickering. Uh, okay. Yes, if I turn right... I've been, yeah, I've been in that area before. We've been there before. So this will be pretty simple. Make our way up the hillside. Come on, Massey Ferguson, you can do it. Keep pulling. Yes, I'm in automatic mode, so it's going to be shifting the gears on its own. Can't really decide if I'm going to stick with that or if I'm going to put it into manual. Um, I, I do quite like the idea of it automatically shifting. Okay, so, getting very close. Okay, it must be this place here. Here we go. Load number one. 8,000 litres. Let's watch the door open. The money is rocketing up. Looking healthy. Very healthy. 15,896 pounds per load. So it looks like in total off this field we're probably going to make about 40,000 pounds. That's quite a view. Got the mountains in the background. I just found that. It's actually a cut through. It's a dirt track cut through next to the store takes off the corner very nicely. Okay, let's get that combine emptied once again. It's probably going to fill the trailer. And then it'd be wise to take a look at the used machinery so we can see if there is any kind of fertilizing equipment, sprayers, spreaders. I'll take anything if it's in our price range and if it's not too big. <laughs> we don't want to have anything which is designed for huge fields. It'd be great to get it done in 30 seconds but Yes, it's just not necessary. We do need to be in the combine as well to uh, get the auger going. Right, okay, so um, use machinery is this icon here. We do have some different things. We have a plow. That's a big plow for 31,000. Half price on the Deutz Fast, still way out of our price range. A baler, that would be handy, but again, we need bigger tractors and stuff. You could just about run it, maybe and a trailer which is more designed for Elm Creek. So let me get things finished off here. It doesn't quite fit in. So yeah, it's going to be two and a bit trailers. And there we go, we have load number two, which needs to go and get the final little bit, and that has brought in another 15,896. So far we have delivered 16,000 litres to the cell points. Big question, I suppose. <laughs> Do we have 4,000 left? I don't know what we have in the combine. If we have 4,000, I got 20,000 right. But that would be weird. So it can't be 4,000. Here's a nice little shortcut. Lots of trees. My voucher is still over at the store, because that's when I bought the Landini tractor. I did have some pretty good suggestions for number plates. One of them was Jenkins, or Dennis. Can't have the full name. Uh, Dogwin was another suggestion. 
but yeah, anything that will fit, basically. Right, so, we're going to pop this combine away. Uh, yes, this year it doesn't have just one field to harvest, it has two. Hopefully next year we'll have three. We could have three, but I turned the other one into grass, which really is probably for the best, because we're going to be getting... Well, we need grass for the sheep, we're going to be getting more sheep, uh, we're probably going to get some cows at some point, and we can also do silage with the grass, or we could do hay. I am tempted to get a baler and wrapper combination, because uh, that could be very beneficial. I must also mention, if you do see any glitches in these videos, um, then, well, some of them will have already been fixed. Anyway, I've already seen a number of things which have been fixed, because this is the press preview version. I've reported some things already, and um, yeah, basically uh, reported to Giants if you see anything. Okay, so, how much do we have? 2,421. Yep, I thought as much. It would never be 4,000. So in total, we have made, I believe, 18,421 litres there. Yeah, it is surprising how long it takes to transport things from one place to another. Anyway, another £4,810 there, which means we have almost £50,000. And we have four tractors, because we do own the Landini. Um, so I think it would be... I think it would be good to start to get some uh, other equipment which is associated with the grapes. We will fertilise the sorghum first of all, but yes, we need to get a mulcher. And the mulcher for the Landini is not expensive, it's four and a half thousand pounds. Obviously it'd be fantastic to get something and use machinery, but I haven't actually seen any great equipment in there yet. Um, I'm sure it will pop up eventually, probably just after I've bought it. But um, yeah, we need more than just the mulcher. There's a few other things. The harvester, obviously we're not buying that, it's just, we, we can't afford it, we're going to have to rent that. But it, it shouldn't cost us too much. I don't expect to turn a profit on the first grape harvest because we don't have many vines and obviously the equipment is expensive to begin with so it's just going to be nice to do and then eventually we'll be able to expand it and eventually it'll be so big that we just make a fortune uh, off every harvest. I want to do olives as well but that is a separate harvester. So what I'm going to do is take the trailer off, I'm going to get a worker on the cultivator in the field we've just been in. And then I'm going to get the stair tractor, pick up a fertiliser spreader, fertilise the sorghum field, and then we can start working on the grapes. Okay, just park over here. We do also have strawberries accumulating, I believe. Yes, I'm pretty sure I do have them storing. Uh, let's just drive around here. There's my cultivator. Uh, this tractor should be able to pull that. If it doesn't, then the voucher will do. And just to demonstrate the semi-automated workers again, I'm just going to leave the tractor there, and I can do it from this page here, once it's saved. Yes, this is the menu here. If I select the tractor, click Create Job. We want Fill Work, not Go To. That is the other option. Uh, we want to create a target, so I want it to start just there, very happy with the orientation. Start the job and it should drive over there. And then it should just do the cultivating for us. We don't even have to put it in the right place anymore. Just tell it where to go. Uh, try not to put anything in its way. <laughs> it's figured it out. Um, yes, it's got quite a few obstacles to go around on my farm. I've got many things. But it has succeeded. It's made it to the starting point. Now it just needs to reposition, make sure it's in the place where I told it to go. Here it is. And it can begin. And that is how it works. No jump cuts, no adjusting it, I didn't mess anything up there. Um, yep, yeah, that is exactly how it is when you set a work from the yard. We're going to have more rocks to get rid of. Of course the stair tractor is the one which has the uh, row cropper tires, so we're going to have to get those put back onto here. We don't want to be destroying the crop. And we can... This is what seems uneconomical with the way I'm farming at the moment. I have to pay £1,500 roughly to fertilise this field. 
and I can just do it by going up and down once and then that's it return it and we paid for much longer than that so we just have to be able to but we just need to buy a fertilizer bread maybe we can do I just don't want to spend the money too much because otherwise we're not gonna have the money for other stuff which is why I suggested selling a tractor it does seem silly to keep renting it because a fertilizer spreader is something we need quite a lot and it's not just a one-off we have to fertilize the fields twice there's multiple fields at different times so we'll see we'll see if we can buy it today narrow ties that should be free yep we've already paid for those good there we go and if we go into this page go to there's also sprayers but I would prefer to have a fertilizer spreader oh it's 25 okay we'll, we'll buy it we'll definitely buy it just make sure it's not on the used market nope but there is I think it's a potato topper okay that one's 45 yeah we'll go with this this actually has a massive working width and we do also need another bag of fertilizer um, I didn't bring my uh, <laughs> annoyingly I didn't bring the front loader I don't know if you can fill it up from a bag which is on the ground but I guess we're about to find out if I just go up to it prepare myself ready oh we can do nice I was just doing it with the front loader before because it seems more realistic okay and we actually do have about 29 litres left in the yard as well so we'll put it all into one bag Yeah, so as mentioned, we have a huge working width with this one. Because it's not a very big field in the first place, we can have a bit of overlap. I'd rather overlap a bit than miss bits. So we'll go here. Hopefully I've done that enough. Oh, I didn't. Wow. Or did I? Maybe I... Maybe I did. It seems to be having a very unnatural cut off there, so maybe that is an area which doesn't fertilise again for some reason. I've seen that before on 19. We will see. Yeah, I might be missing it. I'm definitely going to go back and find out. Yeah, certainly worth going back. But the majority will have been fertilised. Yeah, there is definitely a border. There is a margin. I think that must be the grass. It is the grass. Yes. That explains it. I am going to the edge, but because we mowed the grass, it's put a natural application of fertiliser on. So it looks like I actually haven't done the sorghum crop properly, but I have. We've covered the whole area. So there we go. Nice. We do have the little 20 litre bag just over here. We don't want that lying around. We'll just get it put into one. There we go. Could just keep it in the fertilizer spreader, although it's not really advisable, but yeah, I think we probably will do. Saves having another bag kicking around. There. Right, so we're definitely getting things sorted now. We have more machinery, we have more money, but we still don't have enough money. <laughs> well, we can never have enough money. Let's start doing some work over there. Let me just take a look at this grass, see if it's ready for mulching. I think it is. Pretty sure it is. Uh, so. Actually, there is the packages page just here. Grapes. So the sprayer for that is 28,000. The mulcher is 4.5. The cultivator is 5. Um, yes. The mulcher, first of all, we can certainly afford that, and I think that's the first step anyway, if I'm not mistaken. 
Never done it before, but I'm fairly certain the uh, mulch comes first. So let's head off. We're buying a few new things now. The less renting we can do, the better. Hmm. <laughs> I must have turned that engine on. Yes, I did do. Not too long ago. That was a bit rough. There. So it's a little flail. Let's see if we can see the hammers underneath. Nah, not quite. Yeah, you can just about. Yeah, there they are. Very big, chunky ones. Yes, it's a grass mulcher. Mulch that down. Cultivate it in. Spray the crop. And get delicious grapes. It makes perfect sense because, as I was just saying, we did get a natural fertilizer application from mowing the grass. So, the same again. We're going to mulch this grass. Leave the mulched material on the surface so it can rot away and be taken up by the vines. And then the second application will be from the sprayer. Okay. Don't know if my vines are too far apart, but they look about right. I hope they are. So before we go too far, I want to show you the fertilizing map just to see if my theory is correct. Although, yes, I seem to already have. I don't know if my fertilizer from that. Yes, I fertilized the grass. So that might have already uh, gone over. It's already looking pretty good. But we'll keep going in between. Get it all nice and tidy. I'm guessing it would also mow this grass. I can't see any reason why I wouldn't do. Yep. I think we're going to have to go up and down twice just to make it super neat. Yeah, one on each side. lovely. And I will do the outsides as well. Getting nice and close. We'll just turn that beacon of light off because it does detract from the immersion. Just have this side. I think it, it's slightly offset. Maybe I think it might be better off going the other way. Although I think maybe yeah, it's just it just looks offset because of the guard. So it's just easier to do it this way because there's no guard. For all of the pulleys. Nice mulched vineyard. We can get much closer. That's looking very presentable. I think maybe a bit more on that side and then we'll be done. I can't wait for these grapes to be ready. We should take a look and see how much it's actually going to cost us to harvest them. We only need the harvester for about five minutes, which is why I really want a bigger vineyard. But you've got to start somewhere. So grapes, oh, it is, good grief, £12,342 to lease it. Um, so how much grapes are actually worth? Like I said, I'm not actually expecting to make a profit. Okay, the train... It's a place that you get to on the train. It's currently the best. It's about it's about 2,100, roughly. 2,200. 
Yeah, I, I think we're going to make a substantial loss on the first harvest, so we have to expand. These are growing very well. And that grass is ready for another cut, but we don't have any mowers yet. But what we could do is sell our tractor and use the money to buy mowers. And I also need to make this place tidy. I think that header trailer would be better off somewhere else. Anyway, yes. That is quite a bit of work done. We have har we've harvested the canola. It's now being cultivated. We have done the second application on the sorghum, which might be ready to harvest next time. Hopefully it is. Here is the sorghum crop close up. It's not in its uh, final growth stage. This needs to be stone picked. Um, I believe we do have rolls as well. Uh, which can deal with those. And this tractor is getting on pretty well. I'm pleased that we upgraded the cultivator. So we do have a full pallet of wool, plus a bit more. Wool is worth, no, it's going downhill at the moment, but 2,345. Best time to sell is around May. So we've just missed it. <laughs> we didn't have much though. Um, so maybe, yeah, maybe it's still best to sell now because otherwise it's just going to get worse. Look at that. We'll be waiting until for almost another year. Let's get that sold. I need my front loader, which is lurking over here. And I need the stair tractor. This uh, fertilizer spreader does have storage wheels. So just dumping the whole thing on the ground on the important workings. Onto there, we have a previous load of honey, so we'll get that sold. Um, should I sell? I don't know if I should sell the other pallet. Thing is, if it's only... Well, we'll see how full it is, but it can't really be over 25% because there's only one sack on there. Four sacks for a full one. Yeah, it's probably because I've run over it. Nineteen percent. We'll take it. We'll just get all the money we can do. I don't yet know how far apart the two cell points are going to be for the honey and for the wool. So we'll take a look at that. The wool cell point is the spinnery, naturally. And from here, that is just there. So that's only... It's just actually really close to where we were before. We go up the same hill or mountain. And as for the honey, price is good. Um, that is a place which is also somewhere up in this direction. It's over there. So they're not in the same place, but we can get there. We go to here first, then go over here, over the top. So perfectly doable. Let's go on a nice drive. The wool first of all. I've never been here before. Seems like a nice little place. All these places you don't even realise are here until you have to go to them. Ooh. Um, I guess it's going to be the central place. Yeah, a great big marker. It must be here. Good. Uh, 2,300 plus 451. Give me a bit of a money boost. Now let's go over to where the honey cell point is. a little bit further, but we'll get to see the northern part of the map. Oh, 
Oh yes, this is my kind of place. Lovely forest. I just can't drive past here without taking a look. Such a relaxing place to be in a, in a dense woodland. Lots of different trees. And you can, you can place more trees as well. Yep, in this category, in the construction category, we do have in landscaping, trees and plants. So you can actually make your own instant woodland. But naturally buying fully grown trees are not going to come cheap. Uh, the big ones are in the thousands. Large oak, three and a half. But yeah, it gives you that option. And if you just want to buy a few trees for around a yard or something, just so it's not quite as open. Oh, I'm causing problems. Yes, this is the furthest north we can go on this map. Pretty much. Right at the top. Uh, we need to drop down onto the cell point. And then we can sell our honey. It's only going to give us about three or four hundred pounds, but it's all something. Yes, I've been wanting to go to the observatory as well, so we're going to go there because I can see there is a road to it. So I don't want to miss out. I wanted to do this quite a few episodes ago, actually. <laughs> I've just got around to it. Right, next turn. Here we are. Here's our cell point. We've had a few trips to here. But it would be better just to save all the honey up and take it in one big go. Because it is only a few hundred pounds per load, so... Might as well do a full trailer and make a few thousand. 306, that price is decreasing. I, I'm supplying too much. Okay, so how do we get to it? Go back to where I came. Yeah, and then go back north again. Seems fairly simple. And because I haven't done a separate tour video, I will keep this going in real time. Um, just so that you can really see this. So if we turn right... Oh, there is a shortcut. Yeah, if I turn right here, uh, then I can make my way across to the other road. Which I call it Observatory Road. Uh, this is for number two where I did that contract. We've got our hay from here. Which, as it turns out, was really handy. I still have some left. And that is what we're feeding to the sheep. Okay, and then we turn right here. Okay, yeah, if you, unless you were exploring, you probably would never go up here. But as we have a few minutes spare, we might as well. We've got to have a break at some point. Here we are. Well, well, well. The observatory of Hort Baileron, or O. Bailu or something. I, I, why am I even bothering to try and pronounce that name? I'm no good at it. Hello? I found something. And that probably has a meaning. Um, yeah, because there would be... I, I believe there's some kind of collectibles on this map. Yeah, collectibles collected. Zero out of twenty. I don't know if that is a collectible. I really don't know, but that is something. I haven't looked into the collectibles yet, but that is something noted. Lovely. Uh, okay, let's get back to the farm. That was good fun. Need to get this voucher tractor back. So if I put my pickup truck on the trailer, we can do two at the same time. Possibly. Well. It will do. <laughs> yeah, more designed for that little uh, mower. There we go. And the worker has finished. In the Massey Ferguson. 
We have a lovely cultivated field, so we'll be focusing on that next time. Hopefully we'll be doing sorghum too. Harvesting sorghum. So there we go, that concludes this video. Thank you so much for watching. And the next video is coming very soon, as usual. Until then though, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.